Check one, check. Hello. Is this thing working? All right, well, at least I know that's functioning. Um, okay, so where to begin? Survivor's log, day one. Uh, that's all I really know right now. I can't even remember my name. I woke up this morning in a pretty bad spot. Luckily, I was in an exosuit, so it could have been worse, I guess. But it was actually the suit that woke me up. The alarms were going off about some of the systems being damaged or low on energy. Suit scanners told me that I am on a planet called Enu, which is apt because the planet is as gross as the name is. And this planet is apparently in the Yakari system, whatever that means. I have no clue how I got here. My memory is as blank as the land is sticky. But I knew one thing with certainty. I was very, very alone. So solving all of those problems was up to me and the uncomfortably calm guidance system that the suit and multi-tool had. <clears throat> Thanks to whoever out there decided to let me keep those and then drop me on this planet, almost dead and with no idea what to do next. A team! One thing that seemed to work without any issues, besides all the alarms, that is, was the mining laser attachment. Targeting the nearby plants and rocks, I found that they were made of carbon and ferrite dust, which I knew would come in handy, so I grabbed a bit. I was desperately low on oxygen and sodium, though, as my suit's robotic voice kept reminding me, but my scanner was damaged, so I decided to look for a cave to chill in for a moment and recharge, you know, using my eyes. Just over the hill from where I woke up was a tight squeeze of safety, and that's all I really needed to give myself a better chance of surviving. Not too long after that, I had my scanner repaired, my systems were all recharged, and I was ready to head back out into the alien world to find my way home. <laughs> uh, I, I actually really laughed after I fixed the scanner in that cave and thought about home. Because all I could really think about was the word home, since it didn't actually have any meaning to me. Still doesn't. At that moment, my only home was the grody little cave I stood in. I had a toxic drip of silence that prodded at the fact that my new sanctuary would not ease my nausea. With the scanner fixed and my heart settled down, I stepped back out of my home to search for any signs of sodium or oxygen. Thankfully, the scanner could pick up a reading of a sodium-enriched plant not too far away. I ran as quick as I could to get to it before the system started failing again in the harsh environment. And once I extracted the sodium, I definitely put it to good use. The suit seemed almost sentient, because immediately after I got the rush of relief from filling the tanks, I got another rush as a distress signal was displayed on my visor. Sure, a distress signal doesn't normally mean good things, but if there was someone else out there and they had a signal going, then I might be able to make it off this planet. I dead sprinted towards the beacon on my visor pausing only to catch my breath and grab some extra ferrite dust along the way. And then suddenly a 
shadow passed over me. My heart sank for a moment. Three ships just flew by ahead of me in the direction of the distress signal. And was I going to miss the rescue? And then the ships turned and left. They hadn't stopped for the signal. They hadn't stopped for me. They just left. I had a thought that maybe if I used the mining laser, it would catch someone's eye and they'd turn back around. But my luck wasn't good enough, I guess. They vanished and all I could do was keep running to that signal. Then my day got worse. It was already bad enough to try running up the side of a slick mountain to reach the elevation of the signal, but of course I'd fall into a hole. A deep one, too. I wasn't quick enough with the jetpack to get back out and landed with a hard thud on the stalagmites below. So there I was, running out of daylight, so close to whoever had sent that signal, stuck at the bottom of a hole. I gotta be honest, I, I I was freaking out quite a bit at this point. I couldn't get out of this hole for anything. The walls were too slick to climb and too steep to get a solid footing on. I just, I kept falling down and landing on the same stalagmites over and over again until I got pissed enough to clear them out. Stupid things. I... <sighs> I, I started screaming, panicking, way too much. It, it was terrifying to think that after all that effort just to survive, I'd find my grave by taking a wrong step in the direction of hope. Tried to pull myself together and went back down to the bottom of the cave to see if there was any chance that I'd missed an exit, but I hadn't place was empty and closed off except for the hole I fell through. I, I couldn't give up though, so I, I went back to the opening and tried for probably the 20th time to jetpack my way out and it worked. <laughs> I was back on the surface. I don't know if I was a crying man in my past life, but I definitely was one right there. Hope wasn't reached yet though, uh, so the slippery climb continued on that mountain my eyes looking around a bit more carefully this time. Just as the signal read on my visor as being close, this star dipped below the horizon and I was in the void of night. That's when I saw it. A downed ship sitting to the right of me on the side of the mountain, looking like it could slide all the way down with a gentle push, distressed lights shining ominously and giving the mountain a sinister eye, like a cyclops. I watched it for a moment, just as it watched me. Watched all around me, too. Like it was the red-eyed god over these dark, sweaty lands. Since my suit still needed a closer look over for any extra damage, and I didn't want to stand in any goop anymore, I walked right up and hopped into the ship. The ship's auto-diagnostics came to life and told me what systems needed to be repaired. Obviously, it was the useful ones. Launch thrusters, pulse engine, all offline. There I was, alone in a strange world, unequipped and in danger, with no memory of how I got there and no sense of what came before. But the ship at least seemed to recognize me. The controls reacted to my touch, or at least that of my exosuit. It wasn't dead yet. And the ship, so I thought, was a lifeline out to the stars. I started running through the systems with new confidence that I would find some way off the planet. Previous owner's logs were missing, but my exosuit connected just fine, and I was able to get some guidance on how to repair the thing. I decided to get straight to work and managed to make some progress on the pulse drive before I realized I needed more materials. So I slid down the side of the mountain to search for anything that might be useful. A little too fast, of course, because I'm an idiot. <laughs> but the jetpack saved my life just like before, and thankfully I didn't break my neck. At the base of the mountain was a few busted up containers that didn't really have anything useful in them. I couldn't even get into two of them because they were locked. 
But it gave me a thought that maybe there was more in the area that would be worth searching for. I searched for hours, all through the night, walking up and down the side of the mountain, way out into the valley below, even got my scanner ticking a bit to help it. There was nothing else out there, just sweaty rocks, gross plants, some skittish cat-like things, and the footprints I left behind in the goo. I did manage to craft some carbon nanotubes and fashion an analysis visor onto my multi-tool. I figured it would be a good idea to use that if I needed to mine the raw materials to make parts for the ship. Other than that, the entire night was an absolute failure. I ran through most of my sodium and oxygen supplies. All I got out of it was some slime from abandoned machinery. The slime will go nicely with the collection I've got on my boots. The star popping back up over the horizon with the morning stole what little bit of hope I had left. The ship was dead. There was no way I could fix it and my suit was running dangerously low with some of its systems again. Staying in one spot was not an option. There weren't enough raw materials nearby for me to keep shelter in the ship for long, and who knows how long it would take a passing ship to notice the distress signal. So I floated back up the mountain to look one last time at the ship, said goodbye to the Cyclops, and then I hit the road. The plan was to use the scanner and analysis visor to find oxygen and sodium, and then just follow that in whatever direction it took me. Like breadcrumbs. Gooey, soggy breadcrumbs. It seemed to be a decent plan at first, but once I got out of sight of the ship, I stopped for a moment and just listened. There were no signs of civilization to be heard or seen, except a few broken crates on the ground and ignorant ships in the sky. If I was a gambling man at one time, I definitely would have known better than to bet on this plan succeeding. But it was all I could do, so I started running. I ran over hills and through valleys, past countless alien creatures and plants, didn't stop for any of them except to get some sodium and oxygen to keep my suit fueled. My visor told me to check the ship for a planetary chart, but what good would that do me when the ship doesn't even fly? I ignored the message and just kept running. Then, as I came up one more hill and looked through the sagging leaves of foreign trees at the vast stretch of empty land ahead of me, Something shimmered in the corner of my eye. The pink and yellow painted metal of a real life building was there in front of me, beckoning for me to come closer. I wasted no time and ran and jetpacked all the way there. Hope was found, finally. The main hatch to the structure could not open fast enough for me, and I didn't care who was on the other side about to get a surprise visitor. They could even shoot me if they wanted. At least I wasn't going to die alone in goop somewhere. But when I finally made it through, there were no surprises. No shots. No sounds from anyone. The place was empty. I was still alone. It didn't seem like the place was abandoned, only that the inhabitants had left it for a trip elsewhere. I went outside and hopped on the roof to see if there was anything in the surrounding area worth looking at. The star was beginning to dip low again, and even with all the green stained land, it did seem to be a kind of beautiful, serene night. I stood there for a bit, just looking out at the darkened sky, wondering if someone was watching me. There's no answer, of course, but that's probably for the better. With my heart calmed, mind cleared, and a foundation of courage created by a hollow metal structure, I recognized that it would be a bad idea for me to be caught inside that place when the inhabitants returned. It would be wiser if I approached more strategically 
once I knew who lived there. So I left the place. Activated the beacon outside to find that the name of the region I'm now in is the Cagalaxy Floodplain. And I found a cave nearby to rest my head for the night. That's where I'm recording this log now. I, I don't know what to do. Um, I'm, I'm lost. I'm hungry. I'm tired. I'm, I'm scared. My f suit is fully recharged, but I am fully drained and my my mind is going <laughs> to the dumbest places too. I, I can't even say if I'll be alive in the morning with any certainty, but here I am worrying about if I'll like the man I was before when I start to remember. If I start to remember. End log.